I did that the previous times too. I found one or two people to help me setting a project up. Because before you can even be public, you have to make like documentation or subsidy requests, set up a website, uh, develop concept art, uh, looking at the topic that is this feasible, should we expand it, or how to do it. And those people typically are also the core concept makers. So originally I invited David for concept art. He was a candidate for the previous project for Peach. Uh, Tom called me because he have already my address about this uh, this old Peach project as a spare artist, and he was just saying me that he was looking for some people to make the Durian core team, uh, and so I was Tom, me, and Giuseppe Canino, uh, a nice Italian artist, uh, and. Uh, Giuseppe couldn't uh, go into Durian because of his job. So Don uh, said, OK, I will take uh, one there is on my spare list. And it was Colin. Yep, I was obviously really intrigued and interested and was like, yes, yeah, of course, I'm interested and um, tell me all about it. And Don already had this vision for what the project should be and already had an idea of what he wanted and uh, we had technical targets and also um, a, a basic genre. The fantasy movie come very naturally because of the nature of my portfolio. At the end we was just knowing something before all the team come. It would be a movie with a girl and a dragon. That, that was just a, and a warrior girl. But basically beyond that nothing was set. Um, Tan was going to get a, a, a writer. We, uh, he was interested in, in getting Martin Ludwig uh, involved in the project. Um, he has a real reputation and uh, Tom is really excited to work with him and, and um, I was too, definitely. So that was the start, Colin, David, uh, combined it with uh, Martin, uh, work a little bit on scripts, do a public call, and then we got 150 people applying, which was far too many. Uh, entries were trickling in first few weeks and then like the last few days it was the, the, uh, a deluge. We spent one month and a half to uh, do a, a review of all the portfolio uh, and taking a lot of time with Tone on IRC uh, on a, a channel with Colin just to say uh, which one we like. We make a rating system with a big table with all the artists. It's still really hard to, to select. Yeah. So we had 24 people on the shortlist. And even if you look back, it could have been easily 30 or 40 people. So we're all good. And then even from the 24, we only had to pick like four. I'm good at that in. Maybe we can add one or two still. But who? Yeah, it's, uh, Making the switch to Blender 2.5 full-time is taking a fair bit of getting used to. Um, partially because of the bugs and certain things aren't finished, but partially because um, I'm just very used to the older interface. We're kind of uh, getting all the frustration, um, you know, working in a production with tools that are still growing. The first couple weeks uh, were <laughs> uh, pretty difficult. Uh, and that's, that's kind of scary because we have, uh, I mean, the developers are working really, really, really hard, uh, but there's only so many of them, and each of them only has so much time. When we started off, there was quite simple things were missing from Blender, um, things you'd expect, just buttons that artists were used to having there. Uh, so that was, that was a problem, but we, we fairly quickly added them in, and... Uh, yeah, as the artists needed them, they didn't need everything at once, which was nice, so we kind of got the basics working and then later on um, added more advanced things as, as the artists used them. So, yeah, it's worked out better than I expected. I was quite, quite worried at the start because there was whole areas that were just missing and, you know, things don't magically get added back. You have to spend a lot of time sometimes to, to really get them, get them working. But, yeah, it's been, it's been all right. Campbell and I have, have uh, roughly same role the, the, the difference is that he focuses more on um, 
working more closely with the artists, uh, solving day-to-day -day problems, while I focus more on long-term uh, features, bigger features that might take a few weeks to complete. Oh my goodness. God. It's incredible. Campbell! <laughs> Campbell has added copy and paste. That's horrible. But awesome. Well, starting off with the artists, some of them hadn't really worked in this kind of environment before. Um, they hadn't worked with developers even, they'd worked at studios and there was no option to change the software. So even though Blender was quite brought down to being quite basic, some, some of the artists didn't ask for things to be fixed. Um, and we had to kind of tell them, you have to complain when things don't work. And they got the message pretty quick and they started complaining and asking for things to be added. When you're working on, on a feature or, or something in Blender, there's always an interaction with the community, that's just the way uh the, the project is structured. Um, within the Durian project, I'm not so much influenced by what, what the community wants. Uh, what I do is, is based on what, what the artists here uh, want. Of course, I still interact with the community about, about bugs in the features I develop or, or uh, getting it to build on different platforms and things like that. But uh, I guess in, in a project like this, there's less community, there's a bit less interaction with the community than, than usually. Uh, because of course I, I have, I, I get immediate feedback here. I don't really need to go uh, to the community to, to, uh, to get feedback. Then it was a lot of back and forth between developers and artists. But at the moment, um, everything works kind of fine. And when actually going back to 2.4, it feels like being in Stone Age. As an artist, it's quite cool to have uh, a genuine say on um, you know, various tools or how they could be tweaked. Um, and th there's not time for every request we'd, we'd like to have, but uh, it's certainly more than you'd get with commercial software, just waiting for the next six months and then paying for a release that may or may not have what you want in it. I've gone back to Blender 2.49 a couple of times just to kind of play around with or check to see if uh, something is different or the same uh, or to kind of reference something. Um, and it feels so clunky to use. Every day when you get in, you double click the SV SVN update logo on the, on the desktop and suddenly you have a new version of Blender that was compiled you know, right there on your computer uh, that has everything the most recent. Um, and the things that Breck and Campbell have been working on are there. Uh, I, I'm really liking the, how everything's more real time and I can animate while changing keys and it's just very, uh, very smooth to work with. So I think that's one of the main things I'm happy about. And yeah, in general, I'm ecstatic to use 2.5. No story, maximum impact, uh, whatever 16 year olds like to make. Monsters, fighting, uh, just a lot of special effects, explosions, 5,000 warriors going down a hill and fighting. No story. Maximum impact. I was oblivious to this. Uh, I really care about having a, a solid story to tell. Um, but at the same time, you can do that with a lot of action. Um, but it's, it's, it does affect the tone of the film. And I think from the outset, everyone uh, sort of has a different conception of, of the project. I hoped it to be sci fi, but I saw Jurian as a bit more darker, more epic. Uh, dark, slightly disturbed. <laughs> uh, Colin really insisted on getting also a, a, a nice story and more attention for the script, which was in the end really good because it helped us uh, getting funding from the film fund, for example. I care about the story, so I can only really get behind uh, and direct a film that I really understand and that I really like, you know. Uh, Martin has a very interesting uh, style that really works for, I think, comics better than it works for film. And it's one that lacks structure. The, the work he was presenting us, um, I, I didn't feel like I could direct, um, which is the main issue. It's, it's, it would be a film that I'd be interested to see, uh, but not something that I can really get behind myself. Martin couldn't really help us with this. We didn't have time to do this also, but 
mostly he didn't really even like Diablo. He said, why would you motivate a character? And that, of course, if you are a 70-year-old grandmaster of the Dutch comic, you can say that, right? But for a 20-year-old beginning filmmaker, you would love to do it more in traditional ways, like with the character motivation, exposure, and then setting the conflict, and then having a quest and a resolution at the end. Those traditional things are good to hold on for, for a film project. So then, uh, that is how Esther got in. There were some ideas already, you know, um, plot-wise, and uh, I kind of picked the most interesting one and then brought it out from there. And there were some details in the arena and the setting that uh, came from Martin and uh, that we could use very well.